Hi, I'm Dr. Laurent Bannock and I'm the Director of the Institute of Performance Nutrition and in this Science to Practice Overview I'm going to be focusing on physiological adaptations to interval training. So what is interval training? And this is a good question because although it seems self-explanatory, interval training, there are actually some important terms to understand around this concept of interval training. Perhaps most well-known is HIIT training or H-I-I-T and high intensity interval training is performed near maximal efforts, generally around 80% 80, uh, 80 up to 85, 95% of maximal heart rate. But then we also have sprint interval training, uh, SIT training or SIT training. And sprint interval training is characterized by efforts that are performed at intensities that are equal to or greater than the pace that would elicit VO2 peak, including all out or super maximal efforts. So these methods contrast with fixed intensity training or better known as moderate intensity continuous training, also known as MICT or MICT. And here the intensity is lower than HIT training and there are no breaks. So what about the aerobic adaptations to exercise? Well, with interval training, the improved aerobic energy metabolism with training is primarily linked to central, i.e. heart, and peripheral, i.e. muscle adaptations. And here we will see this as increased maximal stroke volume, maximal cardiac output and blood volume, which allows more oxygen to get to the skeletal muscles. We also see this as resulting in greater capillary density, which goes hand in hand with increased central adaptations, effectively allowing more blood and oxygen to get to the working muscles. And also we see increased mitochondrial density, which allows more fuel to be burned, producing more energy, provided of course there is enough oxygen. And why does the intensity of the exercise matter? Well, adaptations are stimulated by stress and the cellular stress occurs in proportion to exercise intensity. So highly intense exercise, such as in interval training, should cause more cellular stress and therefore would equal greater adaptation than in medium intensity continuous training activities. So cellular energy, adenosine triphosphate, is required at a higher rate for muscle contraction. And this higher ATP turnover is reliant primarily on burning muscle glycogen as opposed to fats. And this results in greater production and accumulation of metabolites that cause these cellular stresses. So how does this cellular stress actually result in adaptation? Well, still, cell stress is another way to say or describe disturbed homeostasis. And the body adapts via signaling molecules such as kinases that sense the stress and amplifies the signal. And these kinases lead to events that end in gene transcription and subsequently protein translation. And repeated bouts of this process will lead to cellular remodeling after weeks and months. So how does high intensity interval training and sprint interval training compare to medium intensity continuous training? Well, the research tells us that high intensity interval training and sprint interval training can produce superior adaptation versus medium intensity continuous training for VO2 max and mitochondrial density for exercise of the same period. So what that means is you get more bang for your buck. But it appears that for these specific adaptations, the actual exercise intensity itself is the key. We should also bear in mind though that exercise um, influences many systems in the body which are yet to be investigated in relation to exercise intensity. So you do need to ask yourself the question of what am I actually trying to do here with this training session? So what are the key 
science to practice take home messages as it relates to these various forms of interval training? Well, firstly, in practice, high intensity interval training and sprint interval training can bring about superior adaptations versus medium intensity continuous training for the same training volume and similar adaptations with a lower volume of HIT or SIT training. Also, for mitochondrial and VO2 adaptations, exercise intensity is a crucial component that needs to be considered. And finally, the adaptations to exercise are, however, integrative, and little is known about the influence of exercise intensity from an integrative perspective. So as always, I recommend that you read deeper and further into this topic. And I recommend specifically on this topic, you read this open access paper on physiological adaptations to interval training and the role of exercise intensity, which is an excellent overview by Martin McInnes and Professor Martin Gibala. I also recommend you listen to my uh, podcast on high intensity interval training with Professor, Professor Martin Gibala also. If you want to access that podcast and all the other podcasts, as well as our other videos in this series and other related videos, and indeed if you want to learn about our online training and development programs in advanced sport and exercise nutrition, please do come check out our website at www theiopn.com and if you like this video please uh, subscribe and like it in the youtube section thank you very much for listening i look forward to bringing another science practice overview to you very soon